Let's review Module 8, Consumer Credit, from Florida Virtual School's Personal and Family Finance class. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of consumer credit, the different types of consumer credit, factors that influence whether credit is extended to someone or not, and how to avoid credit problems. So credit is an agreement between you and another party where you receive goods and services now and agree to pay at a later date. Consumer credit is credit for personal items, except for homes, um, that people need or want, such as clothes, vehicles, and so on. Here's the advantages of credit, and I'm sure we could go on and on and on about this list. It's so convenient to have that little card in your wallet. You can use it online. You can't pay cash online, but you can use that credit online. It's a little bit safer because if someone steals your cash, it's gone. If someone steals your credit card, you can call and cancel it. Um, you've got a little bit of a float time. You swipe and pay for the clothes at the store today, but you don't have to pay for those items for, you know, a couple weeks later at least. And then there could be rebates or incentives. If you use this card, you can get airline miles, or you can get cash back, or you can get this, or you can get that. So there's all sorts of things that kind of entice you to use the credit. And of course, we could go on and on about the disadvantages of credit. There's the temptation to overspend. When you have cash in your wallet, when you don't have cash in your wallet anymore, there's no more spending allowed. The cash is gone. But when you have a credit card, there's usually a much higher limit than what you have cash. So your cash, you, only may, you may only have a couple hundred dollars cash, but your credit card could go up to $1,000 or more. So there's very, it's very easy to overspend and go up to that max. You're going to use future income to pay off your credit card. So you're relying on a future income. Um, it deters from saving and investing because you're spending, spending, spending. You may not be able to pay off the bill when it comes. And it usually costs more than spending cash because if you don't pay it off, there will be an extra interest expense. So there's different sources to get consumer credit. A big one is our banks and credit unions, and you can also use consumer finance companies, kind of like Visa. Types of consumer credit are closed end loans and open end loans. So a closed end loan would be like a car loan. So you're gonna borrow a certain amount of money and you're gonna pay a specific amount back every month until it's paid off. So it's closed. You have a set amount that you're borrowing and a set amount that you're paying back for a set amount of months or years. Open-end loans are much more open and different because there's no set amount. It's kind of like a credit card. So an open-end loan is when you have that credit card and you can swipe different amounts all day long every other day. You know, you can just keep swiping. And so the bill every month is going to be a different amount because it's going to depend on what you spent. So it's very open in the, in the terms. You can have a different amount every month, you can charge a different amount every day, and then your payment will change based on what you, what you swipe. So a closed end loan is a specific amount you borrow, then you pay back a specific amount for a certain amount of time. So those are very typical for car loans and student interest loans. An open end loan, is much more like a credit card. And then you have the five C's of credit. And this is when you're applying for credit, the credit company is going to look at your capital, how much money you have, your capacity, your ability to pay back that capital, the collateral, what do you own that we could take if you don't pay us back, your character, have you been paying things on time, in the past? Have you been a good credit user in the past? And the conditions. What are the conditions of you borrowing this money? To avoid credit problems, you need to use credit wisely. Please don't use credit for every single thing. Use credit just a little bit, just to get you used to it. <coughs> it is much better to actually use cash. Don't use credit. Advice number three, to avoid credit problems, don't use credit, use cash. And remember, interest rates and the fees add up. 
So if you don't pay your bill on time, that's the, the fifth one is pay your bill on time. But let's say you have, let's say you spent $500 this month on your credit card and you only have a minimum payment of $25. Okay, so you pay $25 because hey, it's just the minimum payment, I don't have to pay the rest back. So you still owe $475 and you are gonna get charged 20% interest on that credit card. So now you have 475 times 20%, so now you are actually going to add $95 to your bill and now you have $570 that you owe and you didn't even go shopping again yet. So if you spend another $500 the next month, you are actually gonna owe $1,070. Whoops, that's not a percent sign, that should be a dollar sign. And then your minimum payment for that one may only be $40. Do you see how it's so easy for the bill to add up and the interest to add up? Your interest was more than your minimum payment. It can take years and years and years to pay off one credit card bill. Even if you destroy the card and just pay the minimum payment, it can take years and years and years to pay off that bill. So it's very, very important that you when you swipe your credit card, you need to know that you can afford to pay it back at the end of the month. You need to know that if I swipe $500 worth of material on my credit card, I need to know that I have $500 in my checking account to pay for it at the end of the month. It really needs to be something that you use very little or when you use it, you know you have the money to pay for it and you're only using it because it's convenient and safe. And it's really more important to use cash or debit cards instead of credit cards because it's very easy for this to all get out of control and you're going to owe a lot of money for a long period of time. So your credit score. What does your credit score say about a person? It says how, how likely you are to pay your bill on time. It said, well, your credit score says how likely you are to pay back your, your credit that you're borrowing. So in order to have a high credit score, which is what you want, you want a high credit score, you want to make sure you pay every bill on time, in full. You want to make sure that any balance on a credit is less than 30% of the total limit. So if you have a credit card that has a limit of $1,000, you do not want to spend more than $300. You do not want to go over 30% of that total credit limit. So if you have a $1,000 limit, do not go over more than 300 And check your credit report to make sure that there's no mistakes or problems with it. Who can help you? The Federal Trade Commission, the National Foundation of Consumer Credit, nonprofit credit counseling organizations, but please make sure that's not a scam. Please make sure that it's a legitimate counseling organization. There are many, 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 many scam programs out there that will take you for more money because you're vulnerable at this point. If you've got a credit problem, you've got people that are going to take advantage of that. Your bank, your local financial institution, they can help you. They can give you some advice and also some consumer protection agencies. There are four different types of cards that you can use to swipe. We talked about credit cards a lot already. Debit cards would be my favorite, especially for you starting off. A debit card is nice because with a credit card, they tell you that you have a limit of $1,000 and you can spend all the way up to that thousand dollars but you may not have any money in the bank so in the bank you may only have a hundred dollars but now you're spending almost a thousand dollars what I like about the debit card is you only can spend what you have so if you have 
a hundred dollars in the bank that's all you can spend so you're not going to go into debt with a debit card you're not going to have that bill at the end of the month when you swipe it it goes out of your account so you're not paying at the end of the month you're paying when you're swiping it so you'll know that that money's gone and you won't have that delayed effect of well I spent it but now I don't have it you could also do store value cards it's almost like a gift card to your favorite store and you again that's like a debit card because it starts with a balance somebody gives you a $25 a $25 gift card you swipe it until the $25 is gone and then you've also got the smart cards that you can use but that's less common so you've got the store value cards and the debit cards those are great ones because you can't go into debt and then you've got the credit card which please be careful with that one so for your critical thinking questions again you're only picking two consumer credit is considered an important part of modern society Please explain two types of consumer credit and what are examples of each. We definitely talked about that. A credit card can be a wonderful thing to have. However, they can create problems. How can you protect yourself from financial difficulties when you're making purchases with credit? And what do you do if you experience credit problems? What are some factors that influence a person's credit rating and their ability to get credit? And explain how it influences the extension of credit. And what are three different cards that someone might have in their wallet? Explain the reasons why you might use each of these cards and which do you think work, works best for your needs? And explain what a credit score is and what it says about a customer. And what are some ways that you can ma maintain a proper credit score? Okay, so now we're gonna go into the lab questions. So we have a scenario here where a digital music player is on sale for $350. Emma, Byron, Kevin, and Maria paid different amounts. Emma paid $714.86, Byron paid $514, and so on and so on. Each person bought the music player with a credit card, but they used their card in a different way. So <coughs> here are the facts. One person did the following, bought the $350 credit card, digital music player with a credit card paid more than a minimum payment toward the credit card balance every month never used the credit card again until that card was paid off and monitored the credit card statements paid set in payments on time and did not use the card for cash advances okay the other one bought the $350 player with a 0% APR used the credit card for cash advances at the ATM, which immediately raised the APR, the interest rate, to 24%, forgot to make the minimum payment the first month after the purchase, and then sent regular payments late during the following months and years, used the credit card whenever cash was low, and didn't carefully monitor credit card statements. And number three, bought the player with a 17% APR, saved $300, $350 cash in a savings account before purchasing the player and at the end of the month paid the $350 balance in full usually pays cash and uses credit cards only for large purchases or emergencies and the last one bought the music player with a 19% APR paid the exact minimum payment of $10 a month towards the credit card balance never sent in payments late or missed a payment to the credit card company regularly use the credit card for other purchases both large and small so I'm sure that you can see which one the better option is. So different cards have different APRs, which is just the annual percentage rate, which is basically a fancy word for the interest rate. So it can cost more or less to use each card. <coughs> Excuse me. It is usually better to have a low APR, but there's things to keep in mind. A fixed interest rate means that the rate is not going to change. Many cards have variable interest rates which means that it will change over time be careful of cards that offer a low or zero percent introductory APR it is usually only for a very short period of time so pay attention to when it will rise and what it will rise to when that time is up and some cards offer rewards or points that can be used for airline miles gift certificates or cash back these rewards are tempting but make sure to evaluate the aspects of the card especially the interest rates 
Remember, we said there's no such thing as a free lunch or no such thing as a free item. So if you're getting cash back or airline miles, you are paying for it in a way. You're probably paying for it in interest rates and other things. Which of these APRs offers the best long term deal? A 15% APR fixed, 2% introductory APR, which goes up to 23% after six months, a 10% APR, which goes up 1% every month for 10 months, <coughs> or a 19% fixed APR with one airline mile earned for every dollar you spend. So this is all in the lab. I want you to review it, think about it, and I want you to test yourself by going back and picking which one you think is best and seeing if it's right. There's not a quiz, it's just one of those self-check things. The balance on your monthly credit card statement is the total amount you owe to the bank. The only way to avoid interest idling up is to pay off the entire balance every single month. Do not carry over a balance or a debt to the next month. That means you are paying extra money in interest. So if you borrow $1,000 and pay back $999 at the end of the month, you will be charged interest the next month. You need to pay off the entire balance, $1,000. Which balance would mean you owe the least amount of money? Again, go back to the lab, pick your answer, and see what you think. When you first charge something to a credit card, you often have a period of time before the bank charges you interest. This is called the grace period, and it usually ranges from 10 to 55 days. It's usually about a month depending on the credit card. Which of the following is the best strategy for paying your credit card bill? So again, read the options, double check yourself in the lab assignment. On the statement each month, there is a minimum payment that must be paid, which is usually a very small percentage of the total balance. If you don't pay at least that minimum payment by the due date, the bank will charge you a late fee. So. The late fee is different from an interest charge. It is not the same thing. It is late because you did not pay the minimum payment or more by the due date. Keep in mind that paying just the minimum payment every month is not going to make a dent in your total balance. Remember, I showed you the math. Your minimum payment was less than your interest, so you were actually owing more every month if you just paid that minimum payment. You can avoid late fees by paying the minimum payment, but you will still accumulate you will still get interest on your unpaid debt so what is the best strategy for dealing with minimum payments <coughs> so again go to the lab and answer the questions to test yourself when you are issued a credit card there is a credit limit attached to it so we kind of talked about that already this is the maximum amount of money you can charge to the card the maximum amount you're allowed to borrow Credit cards with small limits are often safer because the potential debt is limited. Which of these credit limits is reasonable for a student? And again, you review that, you answer it in the lab section and see if you are right. So now we have the lab questions. We have eight questions to choose from. You have to pick two and answer them in three or more complete sentences. So number one, what are credit cards and why do we use them? Pretty easy. Number two, what is interest? How does interest affect credit card purchases? Cover that. What are the benefits of using a credit card and what are the drawbacks of using a credit card? In the case file section, four people pay a different price for the same digital music player. Why do the prices they pay differ? Explain the factors that affected each person's ultimate cost for the music player. So you're gonna have to talk about all four people in that answer and explain why each one of them are a little different. Number five, which individual made the best use of their credit card, which made the worst? So there should be two people you're talking about. Number five, what should you look for when choosing a credit card? What is a grace period? How can it help you manage a credit card wisely? And what are three strategies you can use to use credit cards wisely? So again, pick two questions, answer them in three or more complete sentences. And the last but not least, discussion questions. What are some of the strategies that can help you use credit wisely? The number of individuals who have credit problems is growing in recent years. Think about what has contributed to this growth and what could be done to reduce this problem. So again, just kind of think about what's happening. Why are more people using credit? In your opinion, what do you think is happening? Or think about what happened in the economy that has made people have to use credit more. So think about those things and answer those questions. 
please make sure the critical thinking lab and discussion questions are all answered in complete sentences and your answers are posted in the grade book for module eight and then go to the main menu discussion groups and post your discussion questions answers in the discussion group for module eight and then select another student's answers, read it and reply to it with an I agree or I disagree and a kind and polite and respectful reason why. You only have two modules left and you will be done with personal and family finance. Congratulations. Don't forget to take your module eight quiz and then start module nine.